Would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Samuelson. Here. Mrs. Labuda. Here. Ms. Vetter. Here. Mr. Ruiz. Here. Mrs. Geiger. Here. Mrs. Edwards. Here. Mr. Benson. Here. Mr. Steingart. Here. Mr. Sorensen. Here. Okay, we have a couple of things, a couple of presentations today, so we're going to go a little bit about out of order. Um, at this time, um, I would like to, first of all, acknowledge and thank all of the people of law enforcement who are here today with us. Um, we will be uh, passing a resolution this afternoon to dedicate a part of Route State 55 in honor of Sergeant Jeffrey T. Edelson. Um, I would like to acknowledge and welcome his parents, who, uh, Ellen and Steve, who are here today. Thank you for coming over today. And of course, um, Captain Jamie Kaminsky is here from the State Police. Um, right now, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Tom Mungir to come to, to the front. Chairman uh, Samuelson, uh, distinguished members of the Salton County Legislature, I appreciate uh, you giving me this opportunity to come address you today. Um, unfortunately, that I have to actually stand here. Uh, we suffered a tragedy 10 years ago. Uh, we lost one of our station mates, and again, you can still see that uh, the brotherhood that we have, uh, the members that have taken the time to come here. Some are actually retired and took time to come here uh, because we lost Jeff. Uh, I don't really have to get into, you know, the meaning, the police officer. Uh, you saw that earlier this week in Washington, D.C., when there are police officers down there ran towards a building where shots are being fired uh, instead of away from it. 9-11, uh, the same thing. Those first responders ran to, to the danger in a way. Jeff Edelson that day was going to a complaint out in Eversink, saw a, uh, a speeder and turned. He could have looked the other way, but he didn't. And, uh, was enforcing the vehicle traffic law that day and uh, tragically uh, lost his life in doing so. I just wanted to get here and just take a couple moments and just, uh, instead of just the name Jeffrey T. Edelson, put a kind of like a face and a little bit of a background also. Um, you know, Jeff meant a lot to us in the five years that he uh, was a Sullivan County resident. Um, and when he first got to Liberty, Coming from Long Island, he went to school down there, uh, graduated in 1987 from uh, Hewlett High School, went to Arizona University, got his bachelor's. Uh, instead of going into the family uh, plumbing supply business, he uh, followed his lifelong dream and went into law enforcement and became a trooper. Uh, came up here to Sullivan County, uh, and again, the state police, uh, we are a brother and sisterhood. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to uh, you know get accepted. And like anything else, uh, Jeff, you know, got up there, he was a little, little cocky, and uh, we had a little bit of a pecking order, and we might have moved his locker around, but he, right at the beginning, <laughs> right at the beginning, he actually outsmarted us and put cinder blocks in his locker. So, uh, you know, that, that, was, that was over with. But, uh, you know, Jeff, he, he really took to heart enforcing the vehicle and traffic law. Uh, every once in a while, we'll get a citizen who calls or an official saying that uh, in certain areas, they, they, people are speeding, and they would like us to sit there. Um, and the same happened out in uh, Neverson, that uh, on the, the straightaway there going into in Unionville, that uh, they would want somebody to sit there. Well, it wasn't before long that you know, Jeff caught a lot of speeders, but uh, he started getting, uh, the judge started getting complaints from the, the, the locals that, well, this trooper keeps pulling us over and giving us tickets. You know, that shouldn't be. So uh, the judge says, well, aren't you the ones who called and asked him to sit there? And a couple people said, well, we didn't mean us. Yeah. So uh, you know, Jeff really, really took his job to heart. Um, one of the other little things that uh, they assigned, we, um, uh, we are a paramilitary organization. We have a quartermaster down in Middletown. And sometimes you know, it might take a year to get a Stetson. Uh, they, they put Jeff in charge of that. Uh, he was almost like radar from uh, MASH. And uh, he did a good job. If you needed anything, Jeff Edelson was the man. Uh, after he did die uh, that day, we started going through his locker and some of his little stashes. And he actually had enough uniforms to probably outfit all of zone. Uh, there was enough oil there and, and uh, uh, tires and what have you uh, to uh, do the whole fleet of cars for the, uh, for the troop. Actually, uh, the captain at the time, Pat Regan, who's now the major of Troop F, 
had a funny little story he told uh, 10 years ago, and that was that he pulled into the station, and here almost half the thing is filled with tires. And he grabbed Jeff and said, Jeff, you know, what are you doing all these tires? We can never possibly use all these tires. And uh, Jeff, uh, after a half hour, wore him down and told him how the, you know, the price of rubber was going up and tires would almost be impossible to get. And uh, Pat Regan, you know, left that day thinking, boy, how stupid can I be? So I, I hope he bought some uh, shares in Goodyear because uh, knowing Jeff's, uh, uh, you know, the, the price probably went up. But I, I just wanted to put a little personal touch on Jeff. Uh, he's greatly missed. Uh, he definitely uh, was an integral part of the station. He was a station leader. And that horrible day on November 23rd, uh, 2003, will live with us forever. I hope, and again, I'm one of the few uniformed troopers that is still was a uniformed trooper back 10 years ago. People get promoted, they get transferred, they retire. But I would hope that the next generation of troopers come by will remember Jeff. And I think this little, little tidbit where they see that sign for Sergeant Jeffrey T. Edelson uh, Memorial Highway, they'll remember his sacrifice. And again, and that he definitely sorely missed and was an integral part of SP Liberty and all his own one here in Sullivan County. And I thank you for the time. Thank you, Tom. Um, at this point, I would like a, a motion to pass this resolution. Kathy, second, Jean. Um, before we um, discuss it or call the question, I would like to read the resolution. Whereas New York State Police Sergeant Jeffrey T. Edelson was assigned to Troop F in Liberty for six years, and whereas Sergeant Edelson was killed in a motor vehicle accident on November 23, 2003, on State Route 55 in the town of Liberty when he was pursuing a speeding vehicle, and whereas that in anticipation of a ceremony on November 23, 2013, at the State Police Barracks in Liberty to honor and remember Sergeant Edelson, the Sullivan County Commissioner of Public Safety proposes and purports the portion of State Route 55 starting in front of the Liberty State Police Barracks to the Town of Liberty and Never Seen <coughs> Line shall be known as Sergeant Jeffrey T. Edelson Memorial Highway. And whereas the designation of the portion of State Route 55 shall be one of ceremonial nature and the official name of such highway shall not be changed as a result of this act. And whereas the Sergeant Jeffrey T. Edelson Memorial Highway will serve as a reminder of the selflessness courage and honor which Sergeant Edelson showed throughout his service to the New York State Police and all the citizens of Sullivan County. Now therefore be it resolved that the portion of State Route 55 in town, the Town of Liberty starting at the state, Liberty State Police Barracks to the Liberty Never Sink Line shall here and after be known as Sergeant Jeffrey F. T. Edelson Memorial Highway. I have a call to the question. All in favor? Thank you. So passed. Um, I just would like to say that um, on behalf of this legislature and the county, we are so grateful for um, the dedication that your son showed our community and what he did for all of us and to pay the ultimate sacrifice. And to all of the members of the force who are here, uh, we thank you for everything that you do every day. Um, and as Tom Mungir had pointed out, in all of these times of uh, crisis, when you are always running in the wrong direction, we are so grateful to you. So um, thank you. And from this day forth, Sergeant Jeffrey T. Elson Memorial Highway will be known in the. Thank you, everybody. Did anybody have anything else that they wanted to say? I just want to say I'm honored to be able to do this today as well, because Liberty is my hometown. And thank you for um, you know his service and all that came out today. Thank you.
Um, we, we have a second presentation. Um, at this time, I would like to ask Linda Levine to please uh, introduce the presentation. Um, today we have um, uh, the Department of Taxation and Finance has been going around uh, the state trying to um, inform the public about the new STAR registration program. Um, I have uh, here today John Wallen, who's the regional director of the Office of Real Property Tax Services for the Southern Region of New York here to give that presentation. Thank you, Linda, and thank you to the chairman and to the legislators for allowing time to this. I know you have a full agenda, so I will be brief, hopefully no more than 10 to 15 minutes. The reason that we're doing these presentations, as Linda mentioned, is that there is a new program authorized by the legislature regarding the basic STAR exemption. By way of a very quick review, the STAR exemption is the only state-funded property tax exemption, and it provides relief to recipient school tax. There are two versions of this. There's the basic STAR exemption, which is received by people who own a property and for which it's their primary residence, so long as they meet an income threshold of no more than $500,000. And then there is also a version of STAR known as the enhanced STAR exemption that is received by senior citizens. They also have to meet uh, primary ownership, uh, ownership and primary residency, and that too has a lower income threshold, but for a higher tax benefit. So, Essentially, STAR has been around since the late 90s, and this new legislation requires that all, everyone who received the basic STAR exemption in 2013, in other words, you got it on your 2013 school tax bill, you will need to register with the tax department in order to keep receiving this exemption for 2014 and subsequent years. Uh, we have a slide for this a little bit later. The basic reason for doing this is, at this point, because STAR was an exemption that you received upon application and there was no need for re-registration, given the amount of time that has elapsed, there is a concern that there may be a fair number of people out there who are either receiving STAR inappropriately or perhaps double dipping, perhaps they have it on a home and perhaps a second home elsewhere in the state, so this registration effort is an effort to deal with that and to ensure that only folks who should be receiving STAR do indeed receive it. What's different about this registration effort and what I want to emphasize is that in order to register for basic STAR for 2014, recipients getting it in 2013 can only do this through the Department of Tax and Finance. Unlike prior years, you cannot do this through your local assessor's office, but for some very limited circumstances that I will go into. As this says, this is, this is going to affect more than 2.6 million people across the state. In Sullivan County, there are well over 12,000 property owners who are receiving basic STAR. And certainly, one of the reasons we're here today is to ensure that everybody who should be getting it continues to receive it. So we very much appreciate this time to help increase public awareness. I also should point out at this time, and I'll, re I'll repeat this again before the presentation is over, that the folks who are receiving the enhanced STAR exemption are not affected by this program. People who are receiving the enhanced STAR exemption have always had a requirement to renew annually, and they either do that by submitting paper applications to their local assessor, or after initially getting the exemption by signing up to participate in what's known as the Income Verification Program through the Tax Department. In which case, <clears throat> excuse me, the Tax Department checks their income each year and reports back to the assessor, and that prevents them having to do the annual paper filings. So this is simply going into what I said before about the reason behind this. Effectively, everybody who's been receiving STAR in 2013 will be receiving a letter from the tax department. These letters have been going out in staggered mailings throughout the state, and in fact, Sullivan County, along with other Mid-Hudson counties, received these letters, or I should say the letters were mailed the week of September 9th. 
So at this point, in all likelihood, everyone in Sullivan County who was getting basic star for 2013 should have received this letter. If for some reason you didn't or got lost, it's not an impediment to registration, and I will go into how you get around that. However, assuming you did get a letter, that letter is going to have the basic information as to how you register. There are two approaches to doing this. Again, both are through the tax department. One is by going to the department's website, www.tax.ny.gov, and prominently displayed on the home page is a link to the application by where you can register, or, as you'll see on the screen, there is a phone number, 518-457-2036, where property owners can call with questions, or they can work with a rep from the department's call center to register by phone. So the registration process is pretty simple and it's quick. Essentially, the first thing you'll do is you'll enter a series of numbers that appear on the screen. And that's simply so the application knows that it's not dealing with a piece of software that's trying to spam. So you'll enter that number. That'll bring you to the next selection where you'll enter the star code that appears in your letter. The star code typically is seven characters made up of a, number, of a combination of letters and numbers. Once you enter that, it's going to bring up your property location. You'll simply verify that this is your property and then you'll move on. The next information that you'll be entering is for each specific owner of record and each spouse who resides on the property if that spouse is not an owner. For each of those individuals, once you've entered the name, you're going to enter that individual's social security number and you're going to answer two additional questions. First, is this property that individual's primary residence, yes or no? Because again, STAR is based on primary residency, that the property is your primary residence. And then, for each individual, you'll also be asked, does that individual own property out of state that's receiving a residency-based exemption? And the best example I can offer of that is there are folks who own property in the state of Florida who are receiving what's known as a homestead exemption. And a homestead exemption in Florida is also based on that property's being that individual or owner's primary residence. So if someone is receiving the star exemption in New York and they own property in Florida, as for the sake of illustration, that's getting homestead, that's a problem because they're essentially saying they have two properties, each of which is their primary residence. Legally, you can only have one primary residence. In the event someone answers that question positively, they will be asked to provide the address of that out-of-state property. Is there a residency requirement attached to the STAR? Yes. The property for which you receive STAR, whether it's basic or enhanced, must be your primary residence. No, I meant in terms of the time period. So like a lot of the snowbirds that come back and forth, their amount of time in Florida versus their amount of time in New York. If they have a requirement, they have to be in Florida X number of months. Does New York State have a requirement? There, there is no one factor that proof positive defines primary residency. Okay. It's, a, it's a preponderance of information. But the bottom line is, you can only have one primary yeah, residence. Yeah, I get that part. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sure. The last substantive question that applicants are going to be asked will deal with income. Because as I mentioned before, STAR, as of three years ago, now has an income requirement. So for the owners who reside at the property and any resident spouses, based, since this is for 2014, the income threshold or the income standard is looking at 2012. Was that combined income, the adjusted federal gross income, no more than $500,000, yes or no? Then additionally, once you answer that, registrants will be asked to provide some contact information, a phone number, and an email address if you have that, so that in the event the department has some additional questions or needs to clarify, they have a way of contacting you. And that's essentially it. You're going to be asked to submit. In submitting the application, you will get a certification number that we would urge everyone to print out or copy down, because that is your proof that you completed the registration process. And essentially, that's it. The process is very simple. 
I did it myself this past weekend. It literally only took about five minutes to do. In terms of timing, as I mentioned earlier, there has been a staggered mailing throughout the state that started roughly mid-August. It's going to finish downstate in the week of September 30th. The deadline, which I want to emphasize, the deadline for completing this registration is December 31st of this year. So everyone must do this by the end of the year. Around December 1st, the department is going to send out a second mailing to those individuals who have not, as of a particular point in time, registered. So it's just going to be a little reminder, look, we haven't heard from you, you haven't registered. Please remember, you need to do this by the end of 2013, by December 31st, or else you might lose your exemption. Sometime in January 2014, folks who either did not register or for whatever reason may have been determined as not eligible for the exemption will receive a mailing from the department to that effect. That mailing will also provide information about an appeal process. And uh, I have another slide that deals with that, but briefly, there are two ways that a denied property owner can appeal. Both are through the tax department. Similarly, just as someone cannot register for STAR in this program, for Basic STAR, through the local assessor's office, so too a denied Basic STAR exemption cannot be appealed through the local board of assessment review. The first step appeal will be through the Department of, Asse uh, of Tax and Finance, and the second step appeal, if that first is denied, will be through an entity known as the, board, the State Board of Real Property Tax Services. And finally, sometime after March 1st, each assessor's office will receive, through a secure portion of the department's website, a list of the properties for which Basic Star should be removed for the upcoming 2014 roll. And this simply goes through the appeals process again. I'll just reiterate that it must go through the department. It cannot go through the local board of assessment review. In the event that someone does not get the letter containing your star code or it gets misplaced, what have you, the department also has on the website a lookup application by which you can identify your star code. And quite simply, what you would do is you would enter the county in which your property is located, Sullivan County, the township. Then you go to another screen where you would enter your first name, last name, street number, street name, and zip code and that will bring up your property address, the property location. Once you confirm that that is indeed your property, you click on that, it will bring up your star code and you can move into the registration process that I described a few moments ago. So communication, that's really why we're here today. We want to do our utmost to ensure that everyone who should be receiving star continues to receive it in 2014 and subsequent years. What will happen is after this program finishes, once assessment rolls are finalized for 2014, and legally these rolls always have to be filed with the Department of Tax and Finance, the department will review all 2014 assessment rolls to identify new recipients of basic STAR. And I should point out that that is one of only two instances in which your local assessor's office can help you for STAR application for 2014. If you have purchased a property, brand new, you know, latter half of 2013 or the early part of 2014, the first quarter, if you will be applying for that property for the very first time, that is the only instance in which you can make an application through your assessor's office for basic STAR for 2014. That one limited instance and renewal of the enhanced STAR exemption are the only instances where your local assessor can help you for this time period. So again, uh, we're doing these sorts of meetings to ensure that everyone knows about this. Again, everybody wants to ensure that everyone who's eligible will continue to receive this exemption. And all right, this just reviews what I said about what will happen in subsequent years. There's been some concern as to whether this statewide registration program would have to be repeated. Given the process I described where the department will identify new applicants in each year and then contact them to ask them to register with the department, that would probably happen sometime next fall. 
it's deemed very, very unlikely that another statewide registration would have to take place. So with that, that pretty much concludes what I have to say. Again, the department's website is www.tax.ny.gov. If anyone feels uncomfortable registering through the application, they can call 518-457-2036. Perhaps uh, you may not have an easy access to a computer. There are a large number of call center staff who are dedicated to SAR registration, and they will be very happy to help individuals register by phone. So with that, I want to again thank Chairman Samuelson and the legislature for allowing this time. I would certainly be happy to entertain any questions you have. I would just say for the audience, since I don't want to eat up the legislature's time, I know you have a full agenda. If there are folks in the audience who have questions specific to individual situations, or you want to talk about something that's property tax related but not relative to STAR, I'll be happy to speak with you individually out in the hallway. Uh, so again, thank you very much and appreciate you allowing us. Thank you, Mr. Mulder. Uh, does any of the board have any questions? Any? You um, said basic star, but the enhanced star, if you registered for the basic star, how do you know whether or not you canceled your right to enhanced star? Okay. If you feel you're eligible for, let's put it this way, if you're presently receiving basic star, I would urge you to register to ensure you continue to get that. If you think you're eligible for enhanced star, and uh, again, there's an age requirement, 65, if you're talking about a married couple, one spouse has to be 65, the other has to be at least 62. There is an income threshold for Enhanced Star. For 2014, based on 2012, that income threshold will be $81,900. And that's looking at the combined income of all owners and resident spouses, even if they're not owners. That income level changes. It typically gets adjusted upward based on the cost of living adjustment each year. But if you think you're potentially eligible, you would want to get a hold of the application, which is available at the department's website. Many of the townships have it available on their website as well. You would want to fill that out and present that along with the documentation to your local assessor no later than March 1st, 2014, because that's the deadline, taxable status date, for submitting exemption applications. And if it's found by the assessor that you've been qualified, the assessor would then give you an enhanced star of the 2014 role and they would simply remove the basic star. And certainly if anyone feels they're eligible, it's well worth pursuing because the benefit of enhanced star is generally about twice as much in terms of the tax dollar benefit than the basic. Thank you. Sure. I just wanted to say there's a significant number of people in Sullivan County, I'm sure, that will be receiving two letters by the deadline. Is that what you said, of a reminder to register? Yeah, they'll only get the second letter if they haven't registered. So the letters, the second mailing is supposed to go out sometime around December 1st. I don't know the specific date they're going to use to generate that second mailing, but the intent is only to send that to folks who, as of a particular point in time, have not yet registered. And so what would you recommend the county um, media-wise and, uh, you know, if it's electronic, we can mail, you know, send it out to our constituents as well? Yes, the department has on its website links to a SAR registration page and what's known as a SAR media center. And there's a lot of information there in terms of fact sheets, there's a little video, there's a demonstration of the actual application itself. Is that what we got today? Uh, it's, it's partially. What, what you have today is a paper copy of this presentation. It's a generic sample of what the letter people received already would look like, and a copy of that double-sided fact sheet. And if you like, I can certainly send the legislature the various links. If you want to put that up on the county's website, of course, that's great. Anything that, you know, that local officials are willing to do to help get the word out, we're very appreciative of it. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Thank, thank you once again thank for coming down. I, I also just want to uh, thank the assessors that came to the different townships. Just raise your hands. That's 
the legislators know that you uh, participated. Thank you so much. She just wants to get you in trouble like the rest of us. <laughs> okay. Uh, at this time, we sh will open up public comment. Ken Walter. Good afternoon. We're into the budget cycle, and everybody's worried about how high taxes are going to go. They've given, given us some serious thought, and we really have a, a marketing or a PR problem with the whole thing. We just got our school taxes a, few, a month ago, beginning of this month, and we're going to be looking at not to move far down the road, the next part. And we use the 5, 3, 50, 30, 20 rule that we go by, which is you know, close enough. And our total tax bill that we pay out the course of year, 20% of it comes from you, the county. If you have a 10% raise in, your, in, our, in our tax levy, you're talking $2 or $20 every thousand that we have to pay towards the county. If you have a 15% raise, we're talking three dollars. So for every thousand dollars we have to pay in taxes to the county, we're going to have any place between a, a, a thirty, a forty, no, a twenty to thirty dollar additional money. But what do we get for that additional funds that we don't have now? A full contingency of of, of uh, bridge crews to keep our bridges up and going, so we don't have to close down neighborhood bridges and force people to go other directions and emergency equipment to go other directions because we're fixing them in a timely manner. Maybe a road, an extra road person or two for road patrol. That's the things that we get personally by raising the taxes for my extra $20 or $30 for every thousand I pay in total county taxes. So we really have a marketing program here. And the other thing we you know, we have to really address, because another part, and maybe we can fund um, extension service better than we have this year. Well, let's look another year ahead. Because now we got, if we jump this one, we have the other things coming and looking down the pipe at us. We have to really start seriously thinking about funding the college at, at more than just the straight four million dollars every year we've been doing forever. If we want our college to grow and become more of a benefit to us as a resident of a county, then we're going to have to fund it better. So we have to raise some additional monies above that. And we're thinking about a jail. Whatever the price comes in, I don't see, I don't see it in 2014, but possibly in 2015 we're going to have to worry about funding the jail if we're going to move ahead, which we're going to have to do. So we can't do all this stuff in one year. And yeah, I know it's going to be politics and election time coming up and so forth. But if we justify it properly, and this is what you're getting for the extra 20 or $30 a thousand right now, which we don't have, I think that's the way we have to go. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Sandra? I think that you all received a copy of a letter that I got from Congressman Gibson. This is not going to cost us anything. That one? We're talking about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Now, in June of this year, our local hospital, Pasco Regional, had installed two hyperbaric oxygen chambers. But unfortunately, because of the way hyperbaric oxygen therapy is looked at, it's only used for certain things. Mostly wound treatment, and in some cases, uh, radiation burns from chemotherapy and stuff like that. Now, according to this letter, which I got from Congressman Gibson, the 113th Congress has had one piece of legislation pertaining to hyperbaric oxygen treatment therapy, a 
has been introduced by a representative from North Carolina, Walter Jones. And his idea is that it should be used for post-traumatic stress or traumatic brain injuries. We know it works. Right now, whoever has this ailment is put on drugs. Many of the veterans, because they can't get a job because they have post-traumatic stress, are wandering around on the streets homeless. I'm asking you to introduce a, re a resolution to support Representative Walter Jones in his effort to get this passed by Congress. Now, I've done a number of things. Uh, this morning, I called up the office of Richard Burr in Washington, faxed him a copy of Congressman's letter. I called up Walter Jones' office in Washington, and surprisingly, they never even contacted which Burke. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, I also called up Senator Rand Paul's office, asking if a senator would put their name on a companion bill in the Senate. They didn't know anything about it. Um, I spoke to uh, a representative from the Paralyzed Veterans of America. That was. Uh, Two days ago, fax them a copy of this letter. Uh, I also spoke to Kobe Jones, who is the director of the hyperbaric oxygen therapy in our local hospital. Um, I spoke to Heather Hess, who is the hyperbaric oxygen director in Wisconsin. Representative Senator in uh, New Hampshire faxed her a letter. Okay, now this will not cost us anything. It's just a resolution saying that this is something that Sullivan County supports. Now, as far as a traumatic brain injury, all you have to do is fall off a ladder on your head and you get a brain injury. Football players have a lot of head injuries. As a matter of fact, there are some football players in the NFL who have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber in their house because they know that it works. Sandra, I'm gonna to have to ask you to, to move Okay, so now what I'm asking please. is if you would please pass the resolution <coughs> supporting this legislation. Even though it is federal, it does affect us. And the dialysis center opened up in 1993. Before that time, I addressed the county board of supervisors asking for them to support the dialysis center, which was built with private money, didn't cost us anything, and it's still in operation today. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony Lucaston. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Now I'll be as brief as I can. Uh, Anthony Livingston, 1001 North Fairfax Street, Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, I, I, I represent the Coalition Against Bigger Trucks. I'm here to uh, address the board regarding another federal matter uh, that would definitely have state and local implications. Uh, so to Chairman Samuelson, uh, members of the, uh, uh, of the county uh, board, uh, I want to bring your attention to a bill in Congress, H.R. 612, 
It's a bill to increase the weight and length of tractor trailer trucks. Our coalition, we've been made up of organizations ranging from law enforcement to roam free nationwide. There's also a bill currently in Congress to increase the weight of a single tractor trailer, which is currently uh, capped at 80,000 pounds. Uh, the bill, H.R. 612, is proposing to increase the weight up to 97,000 pounds. At a time when one in three bridges in the state of New York are either structurally deficient or functionally obsolete, we're saying this is not the time. At a time when uh, the crash footprint from these heavier trucks uh, means that increased fatalities, we're saying this is not the time. I'm traveling throughout uh, the state, meeting in those uh, key congressional districts, uh, urging local and statewide elected officials, as well as law enforcement and highway safety groups to weigh in with Congress. So my request uh, is either for uh, the board to approve either a resolution or a letter uh, that you would send to your members of Congress, urging them not to co-sponsor and ultimately not to, not to support a bill to increase the weight or length of trucks. With that, I want to thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you very much. Anybody else who would uh, public comment? Any of you have some yes. communication? For the receipt from Acting County Manager Joshua Potosic dated August 16, 2013, designating Richard A. Martinkovic as Acting County Manager in his absence, and if Commissioner Martinkovic is not available or unable to fulfill the responsibility, Edward McAndrew, Commissioner of the Division of Public Works, is to serve as Acting Copies of resolutions received on August 19th and August 26th, respectively, from the towns of Lumberland, Rockland, and Shecton, supporting the enactment of a constitutional amendment authorizing Class 3 gaming in the state of New York. Letter dated August 27, 2013, from Dan Clark of Lincoln, New York, with some suggestions for revenue sources for the budget. Draft a copy of the 2014 IDA budget. Records destruction notifications filed by records from DFS received August 30th, 2013. DFS floor agreement received September 12, 2013. And Selby County Clerk's Office dated September 17, 2013. Copy of a letter to Sandra Barenfine from Congressman Chris Gibson regarding HBOT, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Her final communication is a letter dated September 11th regarding an update to small urban area boundaries from the New York State DOT. Town of Fallsburg, Town of Liberty, Town of Thompson, Sullivan County, Village of Liberty, Village of Monticello, and the Village of Woodbridge. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, we can move on to resolutions. We did number one already. Number two. Res resolution introduced by Management and Budget Committee to apportion the mortgage tax. Okay. Second, Second, G. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Great. Resolution introduced by Management and Budget Committee to modify the 2013 county budget. Motion? Motion. Second? Allen? Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Resolution introduced by Personnel Committee to reclassify position in the Department of Family Services. Can we uh, move four, five, together as well? Four and five, do we have a motion to move four and five together, Kathy? Second, Ira. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Nine, okay. zip. Thank you, number six. Resolution introduced by Personnel Committee to abolish and create positions within the <coughs> Department of Public Health Services. Motion? Ira, second, Allen. Discussion? Favor? Opposed? Nine zip. Two, two, seven. Resolution introduced by the Public Works Committee to authorize the execution of an agreement for the county's auction of vehicles and equipment or other personal property. Motion. Okay. Either one. Second. Okay. So, uh, Kathy G. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Nine zip. Great. Resolution introduced by Community and Economic Development Committee authorizing the Sullivan County Visitors Association Inc. to apply for I Love New York matching funds. Motion, Ira, second, Allen. Discussion? All in favor? 
Opposed? Nine zip. Nine. Resolution introduced by the Agricultural and Sustainability Policy Committee to authorize the county manager to execute a contract modification with the Sullivan Alliance for Sustainable Development. Motion. Kitty. Second. Cindy. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Nine zip. Ten. Resolution introduced by the Public Works Committee to authorize an easement to New York State Electric and Gas for property in the town of Bethel. Moved. Second. Allen. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Nine zip. Eleven. Resolution introduced by Planning Environmental Management Real Property Committee to correct the 2020 tax roll in the town of Fallsburg. Motion. I'll move it. Gene, second, Allen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Nine zip. We move 12 through 18 contract authorizations. Motion to move 12 through 18 is blocked. Ira, or Ira will be second, Jonathan is first. Um, discussion? I would just like to make one comment which escaped me when it was put through the um, Contract Services Committee. Um, that the planning and design LLC is in Pittsburgh and I, I know that you know I don't know who the committee was that went through the RFPs but I just want for the record to state that I don't think we have to really go that far to find uh, the environmental planning and design company maybe they were the, the, the cheapest I don't know I thought with an RFP you could have some flexibility with that but if we can't find uh, environmental planning and design company between here and Pittsburgh to work on the uh, Delaware River then. <laughs> Fill in the blank with the rest of that. Sentence. All right, so by local, yeah, which is what you're saying, by local. Okay, so that was on which? Yeah, I mean, I did ask for, I did not serve on the committee that reviewed it, but I, I do believe um, that the committee that did review it took all the proposals into consideration and you know maybe from what I understand in listening to them they, they felt that they selected uh, the firm that was best qualified for the project so um, you know I, I'm confident in that, that process and uh, you know some of the folks that served on the committee uh, from the byway and, and the park service so uh, I, I just have to respect their decision and you know sometimes you have to look a little further so. thank you Thanks, Alan. I rotate that number 17 needs to be amended. So, Cor, did you have another comment? No, I just, I had, uh, Alan kind of did the homework because it is just come so quickly and swiftly that I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Um, we also need to amend uh, number 17, not the office, to authorize a contract modification of rural self -defense. And the only thing that needs to be amended is that the acronym is incorrect. Okay. I'll move to amend. Okay. Second. Gene. Okay. So all in favor of the amendment? Number 17. That's it. That's it. And now all in favor of 12 through 18. Any opposed? Number 19. <coughs> Resolution introduced by Planning Environmental Management Real Property Committee to amend resolution number 346, 2013, to correct the 2012 tax bill, town of Fallsburg tax map 28-150-7801. Motion. Gene's motion, second in Kitty. Discussion? Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Let's move on to the full board addendum. Uh, we'll start with four resolutions that were voted on in public uh, recess public safety this morning at 8 o'clock. Number one. To authorize the board and execution of contract with SJB Services Incorporated. Motion. Motion. Gene, second, Allen. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, thank you. Number two. Authorize the board and execution of contract with Blue Wave for construction management services, project management services, and radio consulting services, including standards of operation and training for the emergency communications. Okay, move in. Okay, motion second. Gene. Okay. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? 
Thank you. Number three. To authorize a board and execution contract with chasing companies. Well, they second. Second, Gene. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? And number four. To authorize a board and execution contract with Carousel Industries Incorporated. Okay, second. Gene. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay, thank you. I'd just like to take a second to just comment on the fact that all of these resolutions have to do with the interoperability uh, program that we are moving forward with for communications in this county emergency communications. And I would just like to acknowledge and thank Cora Edwards for all the work she has done to keep this project on track, uh, but also getting all the information in a clear and concise manner and making sure that everybody is on board with that. So thank you, Cora. It's a, we've done a really, really great job with that, and we're on our way. Could not be done without the team. Ed McAndrew, Dick Martinkovic, Art Hussey, Kathy Jones, Josh Potosik, and they're now going to be Alex transitioning. Rao. Alex Rao, oh my gosh! <laughs> Alex Rao, I'm gonna say it three times. Alex Rao, Alex Rao, Alex Rao. Beautiful. We forgot to turn around and click on <laughs> And, um, Phyllis, that too crazy. Yes. This team is now gonna be transitioning into the construction team. And between now and March 31st, phase one of the project will be completed. Everyone send your good wishes to this team. They're in a really, uh, I really appreciate working with such a professional. Well, this is a, a, quite a substantial project and it's vital to the community, so it's, uh, it's all good, so thank you again. It's all good. Okay, res re uh, resolutions from the 11.30 a.m. executive. To enact local law number four of 2013 entitled a local law to amend the Salt Lake County Ethics Law. Moving so regarding roll the subpoena power. Yes. Roll 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 yes. Okay, so motion. Kathy, second. She. The usual. <laughs> roll call. Mr. Sanderson. Yes. Mrs. Labuda. Yes. Ms. Vetter. Yes. Mr. Ruiz. No. Mr. Ruiz. Yes. Ms. Geiger. Yes. Mrs. Edwards. Yes. Mr. Benson. Yes. Steinberg. Yes. Mr. Sorensen. Yes. Thank you. Number six. Mr. Chairman, can we take six, seven, uh, six and seven? Is there a point? We have a motion to take six and seven as a block. Okay, Kathy, second to Allen. Uh, discussion? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Number eight. Amend resolution number 330 of 2013 due to an address correction. Motion, Allen, second, Gene. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Accept the recommendations of the Salton County Solid Waste Recycling Fee Grievance Committee. Motion, Motion. Allen, second, Gene. <laughs> Discussion, <laughs> all in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Mine's it. Thank you. Gene, you can't second it. You can't second it anymore. Okay, I'll, I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion. Number 10. Seriously. Ratifying a memorandum of the agreement between the yeah. County of Solomon and the Teamsters Local 445. Motion. Motion, motion by Gene, second by Carter. Uh, discussion? You. All in favor? Opposed? Nine, 10. 11. Set a public hearing for proposed local law entitled Local Law to Exceed the New York State Property Tax Cap for 24. Again, this is for calling for a public hearing on lifting the, the tax cap. It is not on lifting the tax cap. It is just for the public hearing. So a uh, motion from Kathy, second from I'll Alan. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Nine, Number 12. Approve a supervising social worker position at the Adult Care Center. Motion. Kathy, second. Cora. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Number 13 is a roll call. Amend the capital plan for the purchase of two solid waste containers. Okay, motion. Kathy, second. Allen, roll call please. Or discussion? Okay, roll call. Mr. Sanderson? Yes. Mrs. Labuda? Yes. Ms. Vetter? Yes. Mr. Ruiz? Yes. Mrs. Geiger? Yes. Mrs. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Benson? Yes. Mr. Steinberg? Yes. Yes. Okay, 
number 14 is a roll call as well. And then the capital plan for the purchase of two vehicles for transportation. Move it. Okay, second. Kitty. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll call please. Mr. Sanderson. Yes. Mrs. Labuda. Yes. Ms. Vetter. Yes. Mr. Ruiz. Yes. Mrs. Geiger. Yes. Mrs. Edwards. Yes. Mr. Benson. Yes. Mr. Steiger. Yes. Mr. Sorensen. Yes. Okay, that concludes our resolutions for today. Um, I'd like to open the floor to my colleagues if anybody has something they'd like to say. I'd just like the public to know that the purchase of two vehicles is for our transportation department. We had one of our vehicles break down with a group of veterans in it, and it was really not a nice thing. And I, I hate to see our veterans stranded like that. Uh, it is budgeted, and it's on a state bid, so it's really not costing us that much in the bigger picture. But I just wanted people to be aware of that. Thank you, Jean. In addition, I believe Hold on, Cindy. I want to thank everybody for um, ratifying the contract with the Teamsters. I think that the majority of Teamsters who voted on this um, decided for themselves that this was the right way to go, and I, I believe ratifying that contract is in support of the membership of the Teamsters. Thank you. Cindy. Yeah, I just wanted to add to what Gene had said about the vehicles. Some of the vehicles had 200 and 300,000 miles on them. So we felt comfortable with that. It, it was time. Yes. Myra? Uh, there's two exciting things that happened. Uh, uh, one is, I believe, uh, this next month we're going to finally break ground on the Red Bee facility. Uh, believe it or not. <laughs> and the other thing is there were two projects that were just giving priority status with CFA. One is EPR and the second one is the Food Hub. So it, I think uh, for Sullivan County, I think that, that those are two great projects so, uh, that did get uh, listed as priority projects. I think we love them there. So. Thank you, Ira Park. I would like to um, just, this is mostly directed to the gentleman who left with big trucks and Sandra. Uh, we worked pretty well with the local communities to empower them to submit resolutions. If there's a particular issue that is close to your heart and you want us to consider, uh, you just put the whereases together and therefore be it resolved and then we can consider it. Uh, given the number of resolutions you saw us pass today, I said that to the same gentleman from, and he's, I, I guess, has a draft. But I do want, uh, you know, members of the media to know that we do and we have accepted resolutions from the public and we have considered them and we've, you know, uh, given them their due. And I think this is part of the process of participatory democracy. If you want us to pass something, we'll do it, but give it to us in the form that we would consider it. We'll consider it. We'll consider it. We'll consider it. That's a critical aspect of it. Okay? Thanks so much, Sandra. And we just need a well in advance of the full one. Well, if they were submitted today, then we would consider okay. them for the next. The next following month. Thank you, Laura. Anybody else? Okay, I would just like to take a moment again to, to piggyback on what um, Kitty mentioned. Um, the contract or the MOA that was uh, ratified with the Teamsters was an extraordinary uh, negotiation handled by county staff and the members of the union. It was a, a very, very good negotiation, and I think everybody did a great job, and I just we're very pleased and we're very happy to have passed that resolution and to accept that MLA and to sign that contract. So uh, that being said, uh, anything else? Well, just to clarify, we've got sure. the PBA. PBA is done. The Teamsters are done. done. Coming down the pipe next is NISNA. Right. CSEA. It's coming in for meetings. And up, then and trailing LIU. in some other LIU and Teamster Supervisory. Okay, thank you. Cool. Two down. No, three down. Three down. <laughs> two, two point eight three down. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Kathy, second, Jonathan. Thank you, everybody.